Hi there, welcome to a new video, one stage and two stage surgical protocol in implantology. Why, when and how? It all started with Professor Dr. Brainemark proposing the most widely followed protocol called Delayed Loading Protocol in 1983. According to him, submerged healing of implant is the most determinational factor for the predictability of OCO integration of implants. Submerged healing refers to leaving the implant inside the bone and submerged under the soft tissue without loading until clear evidence of osseointegration integration appears, which is usually three to four months. Prenamark believed that submerging the implant fixture was determinational to prevent micro motion of the implant during healing. There was clear evidence to also to back his belief. It was clear that a micro motion of more than 100 micrometer will hamper the OCO integration process. Submerged healing also prevents contamination and chances of infection during the critical phases of healing. So when you follow submerged healing, a second surgical appointment is needed after OCO integration to expose the implant for the rest of the prosthetic procedure. In this second surgical appointment, you expose the implant head and place a healing abutment to form a soft tissue collar or opening around the implant orifice. So this was the basis for two-stage surgical protocol initially proposed by Benamark and followed even today for the vast majority of the implant cases. Although this two-stage surgical protocol ensures more predictable OCO integration, it has several shortcomings as well. One, it is time consuming. Second, it is not patient friendly as the patient has to undergo another surgical incision under local anesthesia and a second healing phase. Two stage surgical protocol was the widely used protocol for many decades. But as we move on, two things happened. One, implant surfaces were increasingly getting better. They all produced a bone to implant contact ratio much higher and they were achieving faster osseointegration integration than older types of implant. Secondly, our focus was shifted towards achieving primary stability to prevent micro motion rather than relying on submerged healing. It was found that achieving a primary stability of 30 Newton will aid in OCO integration by preventing micro motion in the healing phase. And this was a better idea than submerged healing. Then a second surgery deemed unnecessary. This initiated a one stage protocol where you place the healing abutment in the same day you place the implant. Thus a soft tissue collar is formed simultaneously with the fixture healing, saving a lot of time and a greater comfort for the patient. But you cannot follow one stage in every situation. So let us see the indications for both these approaches. Now it is clear that our first choice is always to go for one stage because you save a lot of time as well as improve patient comfort. But the risk is also integration. That is a two stage is chosen only when one stage is not possible due to many risk involved. Effectively, the contraindications of one stage are the indications of two stage. Let us look at the indications of a two stage first. There are mainly four situations when the primary stability is low or when bone grafting is required or when certain predisposing conditions hampering OCO integration is there and when there is a need for a temporary tissue bone denture. The prime indication for two stage surgery is when you fail to achieve primary stability during implant placement. It can be due to poor bone quality or accidental over drilling or whatever may be the reason, the risk for OCO integration is too high. So in such situation, it is safe to submerge the implant rather than going for one stage surgery. The second indication is when there is large amount of grafting is required. Again, to avoid the risk of infection, a double stage is recommended here. A two stage surgery is also indicated when you place implants in a completely edulous patient and patient needs a tissue bone temporary processes during the healing phase. Lastly, there are certain predisposing factors where risk of osseointegration integration is high, like diabetes, osteoporosis, smoking, poor oral hygiene, etc. In all these cases, a two-stage surgery is preferred. Now let us see the indications of one-stage surgery. A one-stage surgery is indicated 
when following factors are favorable a good bond quality and quantity no systemic illness hampering normal healing response like diabetes immunosuppressive therapy etc when you achieve more than 30 newton primary stability when all these ideal parameters coexist a one stage surgery is recommended let us go and see the various clinical steps of two stage surgery Now let us look at one stage surgery. In one stage surgery, healing abutment is placed at the same time of implant placement, so that a soft tissue collar is formed simultaneously, and a prosthetic stage commences immediately after healing. So here is a summary. In cases where all the factors are ideal, like bone quality, primary stability of the implant, age, and systemic health of the patient, a one stage surgery works beautifully. but when osseo integration and subsequent healing is questionable it is safe to follow a two stage delayed loading protocol 